So you can see here, actually, I've got a number of different solutions. These are all high-performance Noctua uh, heat sinks with um, high-performance but quiet Noctua fans. Now, um, you've got a couple of different options in terms of how you decide to go about this. Now, normally for me, in most situations, I'm going to usually install the actual cooling solution outside. So after I've usually installed my CPU, I go ahead and I mount the actual cooling solution. Now, in some situations, actually, I might recommend that you first install the memory versus installing the CPU. Now, we've gone ahead and made a great decision by going with these Noctua solutions because they won't impact our ability to be able to access the four dim banks. But some other types of cooling solutions and situations can actually limit um, your accessibility to this. And in those situations, as I've noted, you may need to change from using, let's say, high performance um, memory like this Kingston HyperX Beast memory to maybe something like their Genesis line, which is still um, high performance and high in quality, but uses a low profile heatsink. So if I go ahead and give you a little bit of a visual aspect in terms of what I'm talking about here, here we have a baseline. So this is going to be a little bit larger than, let's say, the Intel uh, CPU reference cooling solution. And you can see if I go ahead and bring that over the CPU socket, essentially, it doesn't do anything in terms of impacting the overall uh, dim accessibility. It's very straightforward. It's open. It's accessible. It's easy to work with. No problems. If I go over to, let's say, a higher performing solution uh, that we have here, this is still going to be a great option with the uh, NHL12, um, and it's going to still give us that downward firing airflow, which is great, and gives us quite a bit more mass and airflow to be able to deal with in terms of uh, pursuing higher overclocks. You can see if I press that down, though, it's, it is going to go ahead and rest a little bit over that first dim bank, but we still have generally enough clearance to go ahead and be able to work with larger modules, but that's a consideration point to keep in mind. Now, lastly, if you go with something like their highest performing solutions, which are tower-based heat sinks here uh, with the U14, S, you can see if we bring that directly over the socket, it still doesn't impact this area and we still even have accessibility to add the secondary fan for maximum uh, heat exhaust and heat dissipation capabilities. So that's another great choice and you can see overall depending on the cooling solution that's going to affect how we work with that. Now the other option would be that you could go ahead and install the motherboard inside the chassis. Now here we've got our Bit Phoenix Ghost and one of the great features about this Ghost chassis is the actual molded cutouts that are inside of the frame. This allows for flexibility at not only doing great cable management and routing, um, but they have a full cutout in the back. So this cutout would actually allow you to go ahead and put the back plate into place. So these Noctua cooling solutions use a great back plate design, uh, excuse me, back plate design. Uh, it's called a secure firm mounting mechanism. So we could essentially have access uh, to be able to do that even if the motherboard is installed in. Now personally, I do find that that only works well when you're deciding to upgrade the cooling solution that you already have inside your chassis so you don't have to take out your entire motherboard because it is a little bit more work. If you keep in mind that you're going to have to be vertically oriented and you're going to have to hold that in place, it can make it a little bit more complicated, but it's still definitely doable and it's a great feature to have on your chassis. So overall, my recommendation would be to do it externally. Uh, the only other options that would come into play with that would be if you're using a non-traditional, let's say, closed loop cooling solution or something along those lines. Um, but that gives you a little bit of perspective in terms of working with different types of cooling solutions and how they affect layout considerations and where where uh, you would want to install them. So let's actually go ahead and install the CPU cooling solution. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and uh, mount our CPU cooling solution. Specific specifically, we're going to take our Noctua NHL9i and we're just going to go ahead and rest it down directly over the CPU socket. We pretty much want to try to align it with the thread holes. Uh, the installation process for this one is very, very, very simple. Uh, so once we go ahead and set it there, we're pretty much going to flip the board over. Once we flip the board over, there's actually going to be these four screws, and we're just going to essentially thread those in there, tighten those up, and we're going to pretty much be good to go. So very simple process to be able to incorporate this uh, nice high-performance, low-profile cooling solution, uh, which is going to go ahead and optimally work with uh, uh, giving us really easy access to everything that we need to work with, including the installation of the memory. So let's go ahead and hold this in place. Place. And we want to pretty much kind of flip this guy over. And we're going to want to take a look here and pretty much get a sense of where those thread holes are at. And just screw it in. And you generally are going to want to try to go in a star fashion or cross fashion. So you want to go ahead and tighten up. Uh, the opposing sides first, and that'll go ahead and inadvertently go ahead and create it uh, evenly spaced, and then from there just go ahead and thread it in on the other side.
And once you've gotten that in, just go ahead and start to tighten them up all accordingly. And uh, you generally don't want to apply too much. You know, I mean, pretty much if you notice here, I'm not using a screwdriver. Pretty much going finger tight. Uh, the main reason why is you don't want to go ahead and over torque or stress the PCB. Uh, there's very fine traces that are all along the motherboard and we don't want to compromise or damage those traces. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, so once we've gone ahead and finished tightening these guys up, should be pretty much good to go. You can check the contact by giving a little kind of uh, pull on the top of the heatsink and make sure that it feels secure and tight for you. If you want to take a screwdriver and apply a very minute turn, you could go ahead and do that. But like I said, in most situations, depending on your cooling design um, and the backplate mechanism that it may or may not use, uh, just follow the directions. For us here, with this great mounting mechanism that Octua has, we're pretty much solid. So as we can see right there, I can go ahead and do an actual little bit of a lift there. No movement, no play, everything's very solid, clean, and we've now successfully installed the cooling solution.